Step 3, density matrices. So we saw in lesson 2 that a quantum state can be described by cats, and we represent them as vectors. But as we said in the previous step, life uh, and the world is very noisy. So for example, if we are trying to communicate an input state psi through a noisy channel, like an optical fiber, usually what we get at the end is some uh, uh, distribution of different states weighted by different probabilities. For example, with probability p1, we can get state psi1. With probability p2, we can get another state, psi2, and so on. With pn, we get psi n. So the question now is, how do we represent this scenario here? We don't get just a single deterministic state that, can, that is just represented by a cat. We get a distribution. So how do we handle it mathematically? Can we write it down as a superposition? For example, can we just write psi1 weighted by p1 plus uh, p2 times psi2 and so on? Well, not really, because we said even a superposition of cats is still a pure state. It represents another cat. So uh, it represents full knowledge, perfect knowledge of the system. But here, in this scenario, we don't have full knowledge of the system. We only have with certain probability, it's this state, with a different probability, it's another state. So how do we do it? That's why we talked about the outer product in the previous step. And we do it with the outer product. So let's see how it works. Instead of writing it as a superposition, we write it as a mixture of outer products. So we said that the pure state psi 1 can be actually represented in the matrix form as the outer product of psi 1 with itself. Same with psi 2 and same with psi n. So the correct description of this output here is we've got the state uh, psi 1 weighted by probability p1, we have the uh, state psi 2 weighted by probability p2 and so on. But if you remember, this outer product now can also be interpreted as the projection operator onto that state, which is the reason why this actually works. So we went from a description of pure states uh, through uh, vectors to a description of noisy mixed states uh, where we need a description through uh, matrix matrices. And this is exactly what I said. Each term corresponds to one of these scenarios. With probability p2, we are projecting onto the state uh, psi2. With probability pn, we are projecting onto the state psi n. Such a state, which cannot be written as a superposition of cats, is called a mixed state. So let's consider an example to see how it works. It's a simple channel where the only error that can occur is a Pauli x uh, error. So basically it flips 0 to 1 or 1 back to 0. So we have an input state psi that goes through the channel. With some probability 1 minus p, nothing happens to the state. So basically we're applying the identity operator. But with some probability p, the state becomes flipped, uh, which means we are multiplying the state with the Pauli x uh, operator. And this is the description, this is the correct description of our output state. Now, because the state is uh, uh, not pure anymore, it's a mixed state, we tend to write it down with the, um, without the, the cat symbol, and we normally use uh, Greek, small Greek letters such as rho or sigma. So the output E in here can be represented as this, the probability that the state has not changed, which is one minus P times the projection onto uh, state psi, plus the probability P that we did flip the state and uh, x acting on psi and also x uh, acting on the, on the bra of psi. For example, if our input state, the state that we feed into our noisy uh, um, optical fiber is zero, then what we get is as follows. So we just substitute uh, zeros for state psi, one over there, because we applied the x operator and it flipped zero into a one. And in matrix representation, it's given by this. On the diagonals, we've got one minus p and p, and the other diagonals are zero. Similarly, when we feed in the state one at the beginning, we get the following. Here, with probability one minus p, we leave the state alone, so it remains one. And with probability p, we flip it, so we change one into a zero. And now in matrix representation, it looks like that. So a density matrix 
is the most general description of a quantum state. And we write it down like this. This is just a more uh, compact form of, of what we have written on the previous slides. So we have the sum uh, over all the index uh, of index i, where with some probability pi, we are projecting onto the pure state psi i. And so this formalism, this density matrix, can be used to both describe pure states. In that case, all of these probabilities are zero except for one. So you really just have a single projector uh, projecting onto some state uh, psi i. Or it can also be used to describe mixed states, where you actually have a sum of multiple terms. So not uh, only one of these pi's is non-zero, but multiple of them are non-zero. And uh, this is very useful because it can actually describe, like we demonstrated on with previous example, uh, situations where we have noise, either unitary or later in the course you will also see that is, it describes situations where we have non-unitary non noise, such as decoherence, depolarization or relaxation of our qubits. Also remember that quantum states in the pure case they have to be normalized. So what does that mean? Again just to remind you, for an arbitrary state psi we've got the following condition, that the mod squared of uh, the probability amplitudes summed up must be equal to 1. Otherwise, we cannot use that state uh, to compute probabilities of measurement outcomes. So what is the corresponding normalization condition in the density matrix formalism? Well, before we can actually answer that, we have, uh, we have to define a new mathematical um, notion called the trace of a matrix. We write the trace of a matrix as follows. Uh, we write it as TR of some square matrix A is just equal to the sum of the diagonal terms of that matrix. For example, if we have the following matrix A, it's a 3x3 three three matrix, then these are the diagonal terms, and therefore the trace of this matrix is just A11 plus A22 plus A33. And with this, uh, trace, we can now define what's the normalization condition for a density matrix. Given a density matrix rho, represented by this weighted sum, we get the trace of that matrix must be equal to 1. Let's see that on an example. Let's consider our uh, pure state over here. We write it in the matrix form, and you can immediately see that the elements that appear on the diagonals are actually the uh, elements that appear here in this uh, pure state description. And if we take the trace, we sum them up and we get 1 because we started with a pure normalized state. Now, we also saw that pure states can be visualized as points on a block sphere. Can we do something similar for mixed states? And the answer is yes, we can. Just to remind you, a block sphere is a unit sphere and all of, the, um, all of the pure states, they are represented as points on this unit sphere, on the surface of the unit sphere. A mixed state, on the other hand, is represented as a point living inside the unit sphere. So the radius of the line connecting the, uh, the center of the sphere with the point representing the mixed state has length less than one. And in particular, We've got a maximally mixed state, which lives right in the center of a block sphere. And this is an equal superposition of the pure state 0 and pure state 1. 